This is the FIB and adjacency table lab. Router 1 has routes coming from several origins, EIGRP, OSPF, static routing, and several connected routes. So let's go to action item number one. Issue the commands show IP safe and show IP route. Find the differences between the FIB and RIV. Notice attached and receive network. So let's go to router one and uh, issue show IP safe. And we are uh, looking at the FIB. Uh, the FIB only has th uh, three columns the prefix column, the next hub column, and the interface column. So notice how we have, uh, uh, in the next hub, we can have an IP or a status. Uh, notice that we can have an attached or receive status. Uh, the attached status is given to the actual connected networks. And the receive status is given to IP address that belong to the router itself. So for instance, this is an IP address that is actually configured in one of the interfaces that belong to the router. And for instance, this is a directed broadcast that should be uh, processed by the router itself as well as, uh, as, well as this one. This is, a, this is a, an IP address that if, if sent over the network should be processed by the uh, router itself. So, Let's see now the uh, RIV, and the RIV contains the origin of the route. This is an EIGRP route, this is an OSPF route, this is an static route, this is a connected route and a local route. Uh, we have the, the destination prefix, the administrative distance, the metric, the next hub, how, how long have we, have we known this uh, route, and the outgoing interface. So the main difference is that the routing table has uh, information that is not really needed at the moment of routing a packet. So if you're going to receive a packet and you're going to move it forward to, to the next uh, hub in, in, its, in its travel, you don't really need in that moment to know if that route came from EIGRP, OSPF, or static routing. You don't really need to know the administrative distance, the metric, or how long uh, this router ha has now this, this, uh, this route. So that, is, that will be the main difference. Uh, let's go to action item number two. For destination 10.1.4.0, uh, what is the destination interface uh, for this uh, prefix in both tables so let's uh, let's see in the routing table of reef this destination uh, uh, has not an outgoing interface so even if i issue a specific command like show it to route route uh, 10.1.4.0 i will not uh, be able to figure out what is the outgoing interface I will have to go and look up the routing table again using this IP address that belongs to the next hub. So we want to know where this next hub lives. So we'll have to issue another lookup. And then we can know that this is the outgoing interface. Whereas if using the feed, this destination has already the outgoing interface figured out. So, for the routing table of RIP, a recursive lookup may be needed in some times. This is known as, what I just did is known as a recursive lookup. And it may be needed with RIP, but it will never be needed when using the FIB. So, the FIB has already figured out all the outgoing interfaces for all the destination prefixes. Let's go to action item number three. Look for the network 224.0.0 slash 4 within the FIB. Enable and disable multicast with these commands. And notice how the drop status can change. So let's go to the FIB and see how it is managing uh, multicast. So it is, uh, these are the, this is, these are the, um, these are the multicast. And uh, by default, it is dropping them. So 
That means that this router is not processing multicast at all. So what happens if I issue IP multicast routing? Then issue this command again, and now this uh, router will be able to process these uh, packets and it will recognize them as multicast. If I issue this, uh, if I negate this command, the multicast, and check it again, it will be dropping multicast uh, again. So uh, this is how the drop uh, status works for some destinations in the FIB table. Um, let's go to action item number four. Look for the network uh, for the network 0.0.0.0/0, which is the default gateway within the FIB create and delete a default route. Notice how the no route status can change. So let's go to the field and uh, so notice how the default gateway uh, for self has no route is detected by uh, as having no route. So let's create one uh, IP route uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, maybe to this uh, um, IP address so it now uh, exists in the routing table and let's see how uh, Seth Seth has uh, do uh, ha has uh, done the math and it has detected that for this route now we have a next hub and uh, an outgoing interface so what happens if I delete the default gateway? We don't have a default gateway and we have a status of non-route. And notice how the self feeds on the routing table, but uh, it only extracts the necessary information and fills out other information in order to have an streamlined uh, table. Okay, let's go to action item number, oh, this is wrong. This, this will be five, this will be six. Uh, uh, action item number five, issue the command, show adjacency detail, and notice the prepared uh, layer layer two header that includes the destination Mac, source Mac, and Ezra type. So let's, let's issue show adjacency detail. And what you can see here is that this table will provide the router with recalculated headers. So every time the routers uh, will try to send a packet uh, to this next hub, it will not have to calculate the destination MAC, source MAC, and uh, ether type. It is already uh, prepared in the adjacency table. So the adjacency table will uh, and gather information from several sources in order to have this header prepared. In this case, the source of information is R. So this destination address uh, should be the MAC address that belongs to this IP. How can we tell it? If we should show R. This uh, next hub has this MAC address that is this MAC address. And the source MAC address uh, is surely the MAC that corresponds to this outgoing interface. So if we issue show interface gigabit 00, zero this MAC address that starts with C and ends with 8, it should be this MAC address. Finally, this is the editor type that corresponds to IPv4. Okay. Um, action item Number six, issue the command show self not self switch it to know what are the packets that are being sent to less efficient switching mechanism. So the, with this command, we will know how many packets are not being uh, processed by self. So show self not self switch it. Uh, let's see. Go self not self switch it. And we can see that we have a high count on the receive 
part and the unsupported uh, um, counters. So uh, the purpose of this lab is figuring out where are these coming from. Notice that the unsupported uh, packets are still uh, increasing over time. And however, the receive number is also high. So let's see what the lab says. Ping the router for PC1 and issue the command again. Okay, let's see. Let's ping the router from here and uh, issue the command again. And uh, then we notice that the receive counter start increasing. That means that this counter belongs to the packets that are sent to the router itself. So it is normal because one of the rules of self establish that packets that are sent to the router itself will not self switch it. So that is uh, normal behavior then, nothing to do here, nothing to fix. So we still have this part that is getting increasing over time. So we at uh, uh, network engineers should be uh, concerned about what, what is the source of this counter. So let's see what the lab says. Issue the command show IPSev switch the statistics, switching the statistics and notice the value of TTL. So let's see the value of TTL. And show IP self switching statistics. And notice that this value of this counter is exactly the same as this. And this counter So this, this, this corresponds to uh, packets that are TTL expired. So these are packets that arrive to the router having a TTL value of one. And uh, as uh, the router must uh, decrease this value uh, by one. So if a packet reaches zero, that, packets, that packet must be dropped. So one of the rules of SEP is that packets that arrive with uh, a value of TTL of one will not be processed by SEP. So that, that is the origin of that counter. So we have figured out where these come from. So um, capture traffic and look for packets with TTL uh, with a value of one. Let's capture traffic. Uh, in the interface where I have a static routing, um, nothing is really going on. These are la layer two frames. They are not, uh, they don't have a TTL. So let's see what's going on here. Here I can see um, hello packets from OSPF. And if we uh, take a look at it, so if we examine these uh, packets, we can see that they have time to live one. So these hello, OSPF hellos are the source of this uh, counter. Let's, uh, let's try to see what's going on uh, here. And we can see EIGRP hellos that, let's see, they also have time to leave one. So this is normal behavior. Um, so we, we shouldn't worry about it because uh, there is no way to actually disable this behavior because we, we will cripple uh, these protocols. So it is perfectly normal. Uh, we should disable these interfaces and just for the lab purposes, not uh, to do it in the real uh, in, in real life. Notice that how this is uh, getting increased over time. So let's uh, disable. Now I'm going to delete these uh, interfaces. 
this shouldn't be done in real life just to make a point if we disable those protocols or uh, those interfaces we will not be receiving um, packets that have uh, TTL set to one so that counter st stops uh, increasing so uh, this is a good troubleshooting command uh, uh, because we will want most of our traffic to be self switched and uh, if you see some traffic being not self switched you might want to take some actions to increase the performance of your router so that's it